clapping for you as well, Paulina. Thank you. We're, we're totally cheering you on. Thank you. I absolutely feel it. You, well, you know everything about me, so I guess that kind of level of support only comes from uh, from a place of, of care. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so music. <laughs> music. Yes. Music. <laughs> okay, so I want to start off by asking you. I'm really curious about a, co a couple of covers that you've done. And Please the do. one that intrigues me the most, I think you released it July 2017. Hi, okay. high enough. High enough. Yep. By that a band. was the first cover that I released. Okay. Is your question going to be why? <laughs> so I, I'm really because that song goes back to 1990 by the Damn Yankees. Ted Nugent mm -hmm. was in the band. So exactly. How how did that come across as an option or a consideration? You know, um, the first person that I worked with that. I want to say took a chance on me because I had no connections in the music industry when I started. Um, I'm going to take you even farther back. I literally did not know or believe that I could pursue music because for the longest time I was like, okay, I'm a singer. There's millions of singers. I like my voice. I believe that I can perfect it. I believe I can work on it. I, I'm, I've become uh, a better, better songwriter with time, but I did not have parents that were musicians and I did not have a family that understood it or had any connections. So it took a very long time to not only believe that I could go after what I wanted, but to figure out a way. And I never even, you know, sat down and figured out the whole plan. I just kind of went step by step. And the first step was meeting the first producer that got to working with me. And that producer is uh, John Webster. Yep. He's uh, a guy in Vancouver uh, who's uh, a guy in Vancouver. He's a great guy in Vancouver who uh, not only guided me through a lot of the processes in the studio, and uh, he, he suggested certain songs to me. And he and I went through the research of, you know, how do we how do we get started? We didn't start by working on originals. We actually, our first meeting together was just kind of, uh, you know, f feel each other out in the studio. And how, how do we vibe together? Uh, what, what, how, how much can we really create together? It was more, I guess, an audition for me than for him. Like, I was like, oh, my God, a producer. Like, I get to mm. finally work with somebody in the music industry. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I just wanted somebody to work with to believe in me. And uh, high enough, I, I honestly, at this point, can't remember if it was him who brought it up or the other guy who was one of the first people that I uh, that I worked with who actually brought me to John. His name's Pierre. He's, uh, he's my... Uh, uh, I want to say he's my manager, but he's more than that. He's my friend. He's my kind of like my business partner. Right. Um, he lives here in Montreal, and he put me in touch with John. And one of them, or both of them, were like, you know, check out this song. It's a great song. It's got beautiful harmonies. It's got a beautiful lift on the chorus. And I'm such a fan of older music, of older generational music, because honestly, if somebody says that it's subjective in me saying that it's better, I would say it's wrong. Music of past generations is objectively better because it's more complex. There's more thought that went into the compositions in terms of trying to make the compositions unique, whereas a lot of the pop music today is very formulaic. It just yeah. is. Yeah. That's what it is. It's become so much more of a commercialization, and music is all about... Mm -hmm. It's it's expendable now because people aren't selling records. They're not even selling singles. It's all streaming. You know all about mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. So music before used to be all about, you know, what can we come up with that's unique? How can we take this further? How, what guitar solo am I going to have here? What bass line am I going to be proud of right here? And so with that in mind, with all my love for, for, for that kind of music, namely a lot of the 80s hits, uh, you know, one hit wonders, big bands that had more than one hit, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, all sorts of rock and pop rock uh, compositions. When I heard that song, and it was the first time for me when I first w was exposed to it, I, I didn't grow up with that song. I didn't know it existed, to, to be completely honest. <laughs> but just because I, I wasn't exposed to just to some of the stuff that was a little bit before my time, just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a bit. Um, just a little <laughs> bit. And I just loved it. And and I, I fell in love with it. And I when I first started recording music, it wasn't about figuring out what's going to work on the market or what genre am I going to aim for? It was really just about recording what I love and making the producer, the first producer that I got to work with like me and like what I can do and see what my abilities are. And that's how it started with that song. All started with that one song. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah. So, and Gowan's criminal mind, that was even more before your time. That was around 85. That's right? it. But he's friends with John. <laughs> He's friends yeah. with my producer, John, because right. John, he's worked with a, a lot of the really great 
uh, artists and bands. He's worked with uh, Aerosmith. He knows Steven Tyler personally. Uh, he himself was in the band Red Rider. Yep. He's best friends with Tom Cochran. Yep. He's I don't know if he's best friends with, with Larry Gowan, but he's friends with him. And so he suggested that song to me. That was definitely John's suggestion. Okay. I remember him suggesting it to me. And then Pierre, who was, you know, I mentioned my manager, he even was like, I don't know if you should do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to sound. Right. I mean, I just don't get it. And you know what? At the time, I didn't know exactly where we're going with the composition, but I was like, I love it. I love taking an, like an unusual, almost obscure track, obscure for, for this time. I feel like it was a, it was a pretty big hit in the 80s oh, in huge. Canada. Oh, huge. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. It was a big hit. Yeah. And, and I, I think some radio still play it, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah, because uh, Larry tours with Sticks, as you probably know, yes. and they and they play it uh, during the Sticks concerts as well because it was that big a hit, right? I didn't know they still played it at the Sticks yeah. concert, but that's awesome. It doesn't surprise yeah. me at all. Yeah. And so but taking that kind of song by a male vocal, something that's dramatic, dark, and also kind of theatrical. I mean, how, he's so theatrical. Absolutely. And I love yeah. that. I have such a an, an affection for... Um, a little bit of like those theatrical undertones. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to go full Broadway on my stuff. I'm, I still want to go for more contemporary sounds, but I love having that drama. And so we just kind of went uh, by by having a very simple track. John played the piano. He's a really good keyboard player. Oh, he actually yeah. is a session musician for oh, a lot yeah. of great bands. Yeah, he gets hired all the time. Like he works with Michael Bublé all the time on his records. Yeah. Um, and so we started with just voice and piano. And then John was just like, working his magic with it yeah 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 did did you and john co-wrote a co-write a song called pull you through uh yes we did where did you find that never mind <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously where did you find that because i never released that track <laughs> i wanted to ask you is it is it gonna be released or is it something that's in the vault I will. I will definitely answer that question after you tell me the information. <laughs> What's well, out there, because Polina? Because now becoming like FBI Every, levels, and I'm really yes. starting to wonder. He's been told so many times he is in the wrong business. Uh, he should be. He is. Yes. You should be like yeah. a, a CIA or something. No, but I can, for real, I, I will answer. Straight. You have to yes. tell me if you found that. Yeah. I, I cannot divulge my sources. <laughs> but it was the source. Okay. Um. <laughs> Okay, do I have to? Uh, well, right. she won't answer the question unless you do. You do. <laughs> that's it, that's the condition. 